Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. I am delighted to be joined in our virtual studio right here with the incredible uh, cast, well, the cast and crew of Before. So welcome Julia, our director, Emmy, one of our amazing actors, and Lauren, our producer. Uh, but for those that haven't seen Before, let's take a look at the clip. I'm so happy. I, I wish I could just extend my happiness in person, but I'm glad we can do this. Thank you for bringing your film to New Filmmakers LA. What an honor to have this great story. Um, but Julia, we'll start with you because I want to make sure for anyone that hasn't seen the film, tell us a, a brief synopsis of Before. Sure. So Before is a sci-fi drama uh, and it follows a group of not yet humans in this eerie and exhausting waiting room. Um, it feels a bit like a DMV, but it's not quite the DMV that we're familiar with. Um, and they're all waiting for thousands of years in this room for their number to be called to be assigned a life on Earth. It, it, the only criticism I've got is they ended. Because I honestly, <laughs> like, you created a world for me and I'm like, I need more than 10 minutes. I love this. <laughs> this is brilliant. This is brilliant. Um, so just putting that out Thank there. Um, but um, I'm just so curious because I love seeing a new world being created, a new idea in this genre. It was so amazing to see something refreshing like this. But um, so I'm curious, where did the inspiration come for you in creating the story? So a lot of the credit goes to the writer, uh, Josh Bressler, who came up with this world and developed it and really took the time to come up with a place that none of us had seen before. Um, and then we just, my job as director, I just wanted to bring that to life. So um, did. my goal was to make it feel both familiar and unfamiliar. So there's familiar elements like sitting in those hard, awful plastic chairs and pulling a number ticket um, like you do at a deli counter. But then there's also really unfamiliar, unsettling things like um, the employees look identical and they sometimes move in synchronized moments. So I wanted to create this kind of eerie, unsettling tone to this uh, unfamiliar space. Yeah, I, I felt I had reminiscence of The Shining running through my head when I saw those twins <laughs> sit the way they were. I was like, oh my goodness. Um, well, listen, uh, <laughs> Julia, really, really, I love how you had familiar elements and unfamiliar elements because it, it actually just kept my curiosity going because there was parts of it like, well, this could really happen, um, which was was kind of scary, especially in these day and ages as well. Uh, well, listen, I'm going to just um, jump from a producer. To, so Lauren, obviously you were one of the producers here, very well produced. It's really hard to produce a, 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 you know, a film in this genre as well. How did you come involved with the project and what were kind of some of the things that you had to sort of face or overcome or come through making it? Yeah, so I came into this project through my producing partner, Chris Bauer, um, who's not on this call, but is with us in spirit. And I, I just, similar to Julia, was really enraptured with the world that Josh had created. And I was really excited to give um, Julia sort of her first time real opportunity to direct a short. I just really believed in her as an artist and in her vision. And I wanted to do anything I could to contribute to that, you know, to championing that vision. So um, it kind of came about through the, the four of us, Josh, Julia, Chris, and I, and it was, it was a huge challenge to make. I'm not going to lie. It was an incredibly challenging production, but honestly, those are oftentimes uh, the reasons I say yes to a project because I want to learn from, from the experience of making that production come to life. And yeah, you know, I, I could go on and on about <laughs> the number of hurdles that we had to face in order to make this project happen. But, um, you know, the fact that we had a really large cast and we had to create a set from scratch and we had to find um, a location that suited our needs, both artistically, but also like logistically and like had bathrooms and parking spaces and all that stuff. So 
Um, but it was really worthwhile. And as a producer, personally, I've learned so much from the experience and I hope to take that with me into the next project that I do. Oh, fantastic. No, I mean, all, all these elements are so, so important. When you've got a good team, it really makes it extra special. But you mentioned uh, you mentioned the cast because there was a large cast, but, but Emmy, you led the way so good. Um, honestly, honestly, it was really enthralling to see just your journey of discovering this world and what was going on. Um, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, obviously your character, but also, you know, kind of also what you kind of had to go for in, in, in this particular film as well. Yeah, I thought the character, her name was Tabula Rasa, was um, a bit interesting because usually when you get a role, it's like for a human being, but yeah. this is <laughs> in a, <laughs> no way, right? <laughs> but this is in the before life. So um, um, I thought the name Tabula Rasa was interesting because it means blank slate. And so um, all of the other characters also have these ticks, like they're um, annoyed or they're frustrated or they're angry, but my character was pretty mellow the whole time comparatively. So I, be I began to think about like, what is influencing her and and began to think that maybe this was her first time in this world and so if it is her, her first time in this room then what are her motivations and how does that influence her decision to take this life or not take this life that's that's mm -hmm. being um, offered to her so I think that was like the biggest um, challenge was like wanting there to be human elements like universal human emotional elements that the audience can connect to but also you know being specific to the world that we were trying to create yeah no it's 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 amazing it's kind of almost funny this film came in the same year as as the animation soul you know while we were you know i was like thinking about totally it. i actually I mean, worked on know. that film funnily enough so a lot totally a lot of connections between the two of them I love it, but it was, you know, it really does. I mean, I think we've had a lot of chance to think about ourselves as, as human beings or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I think it's a, a really good, you know, sort of self-reflection film and appreciating or maybe how you can change your story and all those things. Um, Julia, I honestly want to say that like, I think it's such a hard thing to direct, uh, obviously not human beings and, and obviously a different time period and all this stuff, but you just captured this atmosphere. I honestly felt like I was in this in this world. Um, how on earth do you go about creating, <laughs> directing uh, uh, non-humans, but with human instincts, but not quite? And, and how, is, how, how did that work for you in this particular project? Because you did a great job. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, every character in the script uh, was really only named by an adjective and then the name visitor. So we had an anxious visitor, we had a furious visitor, we had gossiping visitors. And every actor really just had to build upon that one adjective. Um, so it meant that they had, I had to really trust them to embody that characteristic, but then also um, to feel as though they had been in that space for thousands of years. Wow. And even though we had only a two day shoot, they had to <laughs> act as though they had been on a 2000 day shoot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was really about finding moments um in the edit oh you know you know what you want my favorite entire scene is in that's the waiting room in beetlejuice like it's the best scene possible and it made me sort of like you almost had like the 2021 sort of extended even better version of that um you know where there's so much like comedy moments but uncertainty it was really really awesome to sort of watch and, ex and experience this in, in the entire uh entire script now I, I, I am I am curious because uh, you know I I know there are certain sort of challenges sometimes when you're making something sci-fi or etc. Lauren, like how do you go about creating something that is in a, beyond our time? What elements do you have to do? Like what are those things you have to start thinking as a producer um, and working with Julia as a director as well? Well, you need a really great team. That's the thing about producing. Like, I don't actually do any of that work. I just find the people who do and who are more brilliant than me and who can come together and come up with a really great plan. And I certainly serve as a sounding board and help plan it out logistically, but we had an incredible production designer, um, Robert Mahaffey, and we had our wonderful costume designer, Annette, and also the actors, of course, contributed to, in through their performances. But it was interesting in that kind of what Julie talked about. First of all, we didn't we didn't really think of this as a sci-fi story when we first were going about, you know, developing it and directing it. We were really focused on just 
the dramatic narrative and sort of this really hopeful message by the end. And it was through sort of um, the design plans and through sort of the, the execution of the production that it kind of did go into this sci-fi sort of realm that in a way we didn't really anticipate, but it was always about the story at the end of the day. And, um, and yeah, we, you know, we, um, we were kind of focused on this liminal world between, as Julie talked about, the familiar and the unfamiliar. And that was incredibly challenging when finding our location. For example, we were looking at um, banks and actual DMVs and school cafeterias and actual real life locations. And then, you know, we ended up actually going into the basement of a warehouse that provided us with more of um, like a blank slate, a palette for us to work with and crafting uh, the set from, from scratch with our production designer at the helm. So just really having a wonderful team in place to mm. come work with Julie, uh, Julia intimately and come up with those design plans and really, I mean, creating a vision that didn't felt too sci-fi, didn't feel too familiar, sort of kind of straddled both those worlds in a way that was really uh, unique and distinct. I mean, no, I mean, amazing. And all, all, as I say, team is everything with great, you know, great skill sets and 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 working together. Um, Emmy, Emmy, from I always love hearing this with the director in the room too. But like, you know, what was what was like, you know, certainly it's such a wonderful opportunity to be given like something so unique as a, as an actor. And I love that you got a chance to play and orchestrate so well. I, I wanted more of your character. Like again. I needed more than ten minutes. Of, uh, you took me in, and I'm, I'm, I'm I was transfixed. Um, but how, how was it? Like, what kind? How did you work with Julie as a director? What was the kind of feeling on set? You know, what was new experiences for you as well? Yeah, as well. It's really fun to work with Julia because um, she actually gave me my first ever role in like a in her web series oh, a few awesome. years back. It's called Teach and the Explorers, and. Um, and so that was, and that was a comedy and we shot that in a weekend. And so it was my first, you know, like, like short film type of project and one of Julia's first as well. And so it was really fun to go from that, which was a much smaller production and also a comedy. And it was, you know, it was shot around New York city um, and had more of a like lighthearted sort of feeling. And then for both of us, I felt we were leveling up with before. It was definitely like the biggest production um, either of us had really worked on like in this sort of artistic capacity. And, um, and it was a drama and there was a bigger cast and there was a bigger budget. And so it was nice because we already had that relationship. Um, and also the wonderful thing about Julia as a director is like, she's very communicative and calm but also like she'll notice things that like the script supervisor might normally be in charge of or or like the makeup artist or something or or oh your hands were were positioned in this way in the last shot like things that I should you know I'm supposed to be keeping track of and so like I felt like very like calm and comfortable even though it was like my first time on a bigger production so I'm really glad <laughs> I'm really glad like I feel really fortunate that I got to work with Julie and also Lauren, cause I feel like she, both of them really gave artists the, and the actors like the space to not feel like you're being herded around and, and cause it was a lot to shoot in two days, but it didn't feel so overwhelming. It was like a really wonderful experience. Oh, we want to be on your set, Julia. Honestly, it sounds like a ball. I <laughs> Come on you. over. <laughs> Come on over. I'm, I'm so happy, Lauren, I'm so happy you said you wanted to give Julia an opportunity to, to be as a director because honestly, it feels like you've been doing this for many, many, many projects and, you know, having a, goodness me, I mean, you know, what half of being a great director is just having someone that's approachable, level-headed and, and, you know, kind and just, you know, and I, I just feel like you've got all of, so many attributes and and so it's i'm really excited to see many more of your projects you know now that you are directing like what is what is your what what is it for you about is it the storytelling like what makes you kind of excited about you know taking on you know being in this role because um you know everyone's got different things that they enjoy the most i'm just curious what yours is yeah i mean i think every step of the process i find things to love about um i love how in pre-production it's so anything is possible and you can talk in this blue, blue sky and you can you can choose to set it in a bank or in a cafeteria or build a set from scratch like Lauren was saying 
Um, and then I love in the shoot day, how it's all kind of intuition and it's all problem solving and just addressing things as they happen. And then in the edit, I feel like it's all about just discovering things you, uh, you didn't even know you had. So our editor, Lindsay Armstrong is just amazing at finding these small details and these little moments that, um, that were in the performance and we were able to put it into this final product. Um, and then once we started working with a sound designer and an amazing composer, and it just felt like the final product, it was a greater than the sum of its parts, um, which to me is, that's probably, if I had to pick one thing, that's what I like the most about directing is that you start with all these tiny disparate pieces and then you put it all together and it's something beautiful. And um, even though those things can stand alone, it's when you put it all together, it's just, um, it can leave people with an emotional feeling. Yeah, oh, absolutely. My goodness. No, I'm, I'm just, I wanted to walk through that door and see what I was going to come out looking like, you know, I was, I was all ready for it. Um, <laughs> um, no, Emmy, I, I, I love, I, you know, I, I, you, you know, kind of, you know, made it, made an, an, an important sort of, you know, observation, um, which has now just skipped my mind, but you made an important observation about, you know, about Ju Ju Julian and her, and her process. And I think, I think it's, you know, again, when you've got that freedom as, a, as, a, as an artist to be able to kind of express yourself and, and you know, and, and try new things. And I think, uh, Julia, uh, that was what it was, having attention to detail, like, you know, like you can't, you either got it or you don't. And that's such an important part, uh, you know, to, to being a filmmaker, and I'm, you know, so that's, I, I'm excited. It did look very polished in this world. So you did a great job. Um, let me say, I want to go around each of you because you've all got different roles that you play, that you take on, and we've got a filmmaking audience here. I'll start with you, Lauren, but question for everybody. For you as a producer, do you have any advice for any emerging filmmaker, you know, coming through? Um, you know, if there's anything you want to share, um, I, I would love to hear that. Maybe it's something that you go by in your day as a producer that could be of interest to, to others, what well, will be of interest, I'm sure. Yeah, that's a really, that's a really great question. Um, I actually, I work full time at the Sundance Institute and I work with emerging filmmakers all the time. And so it's one I get asked quite a lot. And um, it's tricky because what does emerging even really mean? It can be applied yeah. to so many different people and it can be defined in so many ways. But I guess like the best kind of universal advice that I can give is number one, like, keep making your art, just whatever it is. If you're writing, get up in the morning and write. If you're a director, go out and shoot something. If you're an actor, go self-tape and practice your monologues. And then the second part of that is do it in front of people, like get people to watch and receive your work. So if you're a writer, go share it with your friends. If you're a director, go have them watch your cuts. If, they're, if you're an actor, go have your friends, you know, go perform for your friends and get feedback and, and just collaborate in that sense and really grow your community. Because working in this industry can oftentimes feel, particularly in a pandemic, incredibly isolating. And it yes. is so, so important to have your community at every step of the way, because that to me is what makes it worth it in the long run and why I do what I do. And so that's sort of my biggest advice to emerging filmmakers. Well, the sun does is true. It's lucky to have you. <laughs> and, and we're lucky to work with you too at New Filmmakers LA. So with the with Sundance Institute. So um, we're very, very fortunate. Well, that that's great advice. I'm, I'm ready to go. And, you know, Emmy, things have really changed for actors over the course of this particular time and juncture. And and mm -hmm. everything was already difficult as it was anyway. But like for, for you, from, from your perspective, like what is it? What is it for you? What, you know, what kind of advice can you share? Because you know it could be a scary world gun there as an actor, and, and it's tougher in these times at the moment as well. Yeah, totally. I, I think that like um, for me, one thing I've had to like hone in on is what kind of like what do I want out of my career as an actor. I think it, it varies from actor to actor. Some people, they just want the paycheck. It doesn't matter where it comes from, but some people have more of an artistic um, objective. For me, I really uh, love um, independent dramas or like, that's just, that's what kind of gets me motivated. And um, I think that like identifying what I want, but like being open to opportunity, of course, you know, as an actor, you're kind of at the bottom of the totem pole. Beggars can't be choosers, you know, you gotta take whatever comes your way, but also like 
knowing what it is that I want in the long run so that I don't get lost. Cause I feel like with filmmaking, there's so many different paths and different like um, secondary tertiary uh, jobs related to filmmaking or related to acting that can kind of lead you astray and, um, and maybe take you away from what brought you here in the first place and like what you really love. So I think for me, just like knowing what it is I want out of my career and um, remembering that as I, as I go along has been, has been helpful. Well, one thing you definitely had in this film is you carry the story really well. Like I was totally enthralled and interested in your character. As again, I was sad that it ended because I was like, what's going to happen to her? What's going on? Where's she going? You know, like, you know, please take <laughs> care of her. Okay. <laughs> you know what's happening here. Um, no, you really did carry it very well. And you know that not everyone can do that even as an actor, but you certainly did. And, you know, so well done with that. Um, and, and finally for, for you, Julia, like, obviously I, again, I say, I feel like we're about to talk about your 53rd film, but we're not, we're, you know, this is, this is the beginning, which is very exciting. Uh, what could you share out there to, and again, I love what Lauren said, because emerging, you know, you might decide to emerge to make your first film at 85 years old. And we certainly have that in new filmmakers. But, you know, what what for you is 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 kind of important for you that you could share with the audience? Yeah. So since this was my first short film to direct, um, I really my way of preparing was to just absorb as much information as I could. Um, I felt like whenever I had nerves or stress about it, I would just turn to any resource I could find, whether it was a podcast or a book or a friend who was a director and just kind of uh, pick their brain. And I feel like that is how I handle stress is information gathering. So by the, by the shoot day, I felt as prepared as I could, but then I also had to learn how to um, just let go and, and whatever happened, happened and react in the moment. Um, and then when releasing the film, um, it's been interesting because people seem to have all different reactions. Um, and then I, as a director, something I, I wanna continue to think about throughout my career is that um, films and short films in general are meant to ask questions, not answer them. Um, that's something I really believe in. So I just, uh, I wanna create conversations and ask questions and tell stories. And I love the idea that people can leave a film and have completely different interpretations. And then it sparks a conversation with someone else. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. Well, I always think if you can make this kind of, you know, quality of film in 40 hours, what can you do when you've got, you know, two months, three months, you know, and, and that's exciting. I can't wait to see what, you know, as, as things grow, but thank you for your storytelling. Thank you. I wish we had so much longer. I'm so sorry. I, I adore having this conversation. Thank you for your Ted filmmaking, Ted filmmaking talk that we just had. Um, it was wonderful. And please keep making more projects for us and coming back to us. And we appreciate you and our family. So thank you. Thank you so much. Very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Danny. Thank you. Thank you.